right, go ahead, Kaylin. So, Caitlin, to me, it seems like this should be a number one contender fight. Right off the bat, is that, do you agree with that? Yeah, I 100% agree with that. I mean, I think besides the two girls fighting the co-main event, I think that me and Jessica are the only other girls that are really being talked about and taken seriously in this division. So, uh, I definitely think that this is a number one contender fight. Jessica has a pretty outspoken personality. Has there been any back and forth leading up to this fight, or has it just been sort of business as usual like your other opponents? Yeah, I mean, business as usual. It's kind of, I don't really, I just come in, I train, I show up to fight, so it's kind of hard for her to, like, you know, talk crap if I don't really give her anything. Um, you know, I, I stay pretty focused training. I don't really worry about that stuff at all, so it kind of makes it hard for her. And then on that same note, I know the last fight when you headed in, there was a little bit of uh, social media chatter, uh, just, you know, uh, trolls and things like that. Have you had any of that heading into this fight? Uh, not really. I no. mean, I mean, it's like an everyday thing, so, yeah. but nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Do you stay off social media, sort of leading up to the fight, just to hone in on the on the matchup? Um, a little bit. I mean, I don't stay completely off of it, but just because I'm sitting in a hotel all week, so I'm pretty bored. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I s try not to look at it too much, but it's it's there in front of your, you know, you're on your phone every second of the day, so you're gonna see stuff. Have either of you been told that you would, like be the official backup fighter if something does happen? Uh, yeah, I was told that. So it's you, okay? Yeah. When you watch Jessica, I mean Jessica at this point has made a big deal about the big difference for her between flyweight and bantamweight and how much better this division is for her. When you watch her and her performances in this division, do you see any difference between how she used to be at bantamweight? Um, not really. I mean, maybe she has some inner confidence and that makes her feel better, but a lot of the girls in the top 10 are from 135 coming down, so I mean, I don't really feel bad for her because we've all been there. We just all don't complain about it all the time. You know, it's business. You chose to go up to 135, so you can't complain about it if it was your your choice. No one forced you to go there. Um, but, I mean, the girls she fought at 135 were very good and tough girls. So, um, I mean, I think that was tough. I don't know if necessarily it was the weight difference because I've always fought at 25 until I went to the UFC, and I had three fights at 35, and I went back down. I feel better at 25, but... At 35, I didn't really feel a difference. I mean, you've got some really big wins in your career. Eubanks, uh, Lauren Murphy. Why, why do you feel like it is you're, you still seem to be flying under the radar in this division? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm undefeated at 125. Uh, I've beaten more girls in the flyweight division than anyone else that's in the division. Some of them were outside of the UFC, so maybe that's why they don't get recognized. But, I mean... I have like went 7 and 0 amateur and then I was 7 and 0 pro until I went into the UFC. Now I got another two wins at flyweight. So, I mean, my only loss is at bantamweight and it was a split decision. So, I don't know why I'm getting overlooked, but I keep winning. So, there's, you know, if I keep winning, I'll keep going up the ranks and then there's nothing nothing I can say. Jessica has sort of talked about how she's sort of the young crown champion. She feels that, you know, she's she's at the top of the division. Do you feel like the performances she's had at flyweight uh, sort of backs that up? Or what are your thoughts on her at flyweight in the UFC? Um, I don't think that they necessarily back it up. I mean, I don't really remember that. I had to, when I got her fight, I had to go back and watch them. There was nothing that, like, stuck out. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, me and her both kind of had, like, decisions. So, you know, nowadays, if you... If it's a decision, it doesn't matter how good it is. If it's a decision, it doesn't count. That's kind of, unfortunately, that's how it seems to be. So, um, I mean, I don't, do you guys think they stuck out? Like, do you remember them? Uh, yeah. I'm asking you. But yeah. uh, on that same note, uh, we've got the title fight, obviously, on, on Saturday. Um, who, who do you have in that fight? Who do you think wins between Valentina and Joanna? Um, I think Valentina. I think uh, she maybe has, like, with the previous wins over her, I think maybe she has a little bit of the mental edge. Um, I think she's just a little bit more explosive. Several of the top flyweights from that fight was even just being discussed. Kind of took umbrage with the idea of Joanna being thrown in there without fighting this division. Did you have any thoughts on that? Like, just generally, were you okay with Joanna getting that shot? Yeah, I felt like I was supposed to, like, jump on, like, the flyweight bandwagon and be like, oh, this isn't fair. But, I mean, like, Johanna had, the t like, how many title defenses? And, you know, everyone knows who she is. No one knows, like, who the rest of us are. Like, I mean, it's, it's business. That's kind of how it is. And, you know, them being on the, you know, Joanna fighting Valentina, it brings more attention to the division, which benefits all of us in the end. So if it's one more fight, you know, let it bring more attention. And then when you beat, then when you get the title shot and you beat one of the, the winner of that, you know, it's better for you. So before it was all negative energy towards the division with uh, Nico having the, the title and then fighting Valentina. So now I think it seems like it's all positive division and it it's taking, it's being taken a little bit more serious as it should be. So. 
I think it's a, a great thing that Johanna's fighting for the title, and I think she deserves it. It's well, hard. actually, I want to ask you about that because it seems like this division has been around for almost more than a year at this point. Mm -hmm. and it still has been very slow to latch on. Why do you think that is? Is it just because of Nico, or is there another um, factor? I don't think it's necessarily the title. I think at first all the fights were just Ultimate Fighter matchups, and a lot of the girls were went on Ultimate Fighter because they weren't in the UFC or they didn't they weren't in they weren't necessarily all in Invicta, so like they didn't have as much experience as most of the other girls. So I think the other girls like myself and Jessica and a couple of the other girls that were either already in the UFC or really top 125ers they're kind of coming in and people are getting to recognize them but for the first year it was just like watching the girls on the ultimate fighter so i think that's why it took a little longer for it to okay you know. caitlin it's uh it's hard to finish women at this level mm -hmm. at, at your size why do you think that is do you think it's skill or mental toughness why is it it tough to get a finish at this level um i mean i don't know maybe it's a little bit of the power or the guys you see a little bit more like one punch knockouts um but that's why i think you know, I kind of see over my last couple of fights that I need to implement my jiu-jitsu a little bit more because no matter what your size is or your power, you, you can always finish with jiu-jitsu. But I think a lot of the girls seem to tend to be more strikers and with the with the power for females, I think maybe that's why. You've hit some of your opponents hard mm -hmm. and, and they haven't gone to sleep. Is that intimidating? Is that tough as you're hitting somebody with your best stuff and they keep coming? Um, not necessarily because I'm not, ne uh, you know, when I fight I'm not like going in there and be like, all right, I'm trying to knock you out. Like I'm, I'm mean, I'm boxing. I'm trying to hit and not get hit. So I'm trying to stick and move. So I'm not necessarily like always trying to knock the person out with the punches. So it's not super frustrating. I mean, at this level, every girl is really tough. So I go in expecting that. Um, but you know, sitting on my punches is something that I've been working on since my last fight. So hopefully that helps. Uh, you're currently number I believe ranked in the flyweight division. Is there anything other than the change in weight class that you can sort of credit to this front end, the success? Um, I mean, I think, like I said, I don't think that the weight class really makes that much of a difference. A little bit, you know, with certain matchups, you know, but like you'll get at 135, you'll get a couple, like a handful of girls that are just really, really strong. But luckily, the girls I had at 35 for the short time I was there, you know. Some of them are fighting at 25 now, but um, you know I think that I just at 25 I just have a little bit more confidence. Um, I'm definitely one of the tallest girls. I don't think that there's any girl taller than me. I'm almost 5'9", and I think at 35 I was you know one of the tallest girls. So I'm able to use my reach a little bit more, and that just kind of is what I'm used to. I'm used to being the taller fighter. Uh, so I think that just gives me a little bit more confidence and advantage. What do you weigh when you step in the cage? Um, probably about like 10 pounds heavier, like 136, 137. Being the official backup fighter for this coming event, have you kept the games of UNA and, and Valentina in the back of your mind a bit more than you usually would, or are you just fully focused on, on No, I'm fully focused on, um, on Jessica. You know, when they had the whole MSG incident, when they, we thought Sajara was going to be the going to be fighting Valentina and then they said I was going to weigh in and be the backup without a fight so for like two weeks I was like fighting Valentina you know two weeks I was fighting Valentina and cutting weight and I was like alright this is it you know I'm going to I'm going to be fighting at MSG so I got enough there you know I spar a couple people regularly that are lefties um, but when they said that I would be the backup I didn't want to focus on Valentina and get ahead of myself I want to focus on fo focus on Jessica I because you know I try not to like you know, just focus on like the one op the opponent, but rather me. So if I prepare for just a guy, and then something happens, and I switch opponents, you know, I'll be prepared the best that I'm prepared. I always have good conditioning. So if it goes from three to five rounds, you know, that's usually better for me. I I prefer five rounds. On Twitter at Blonde Fighter, you claim to have the best hair in MMA, <coughs> in MMA on your profile. Yes. But I think Elias Theodoro has the best hair. I know. This so is like an ongoing battle. How you beat Elias in the hair game? Um. I definitely beat it. I mean, I think I get more compliments, uh, but I told him we would uh, go fair and do it like a high school yearbook and we'd have the boy and girl award. So that's, <laughs> a, that's the way we can settle it because everyone always argues about that. Okay, I can sleep at night now. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kate. All right, thank you. Thank you.